So for the panel, uh, I invite back, back uh, Andreas and Seth, of course, and Osa Stjärna is now joining us for this panel. Uh, she's a Swedish artist. She's worked a lot with sound art installation for public spaces. And my first contact with your work were, I think we said it was like six years ago when you installed a piece at the Stockholm University Library. Uh, in one of the reading rooms. I was very impressed at the moment that you could do a sound art installation within the very quiet building or quiet room. Um, you are also a writer, and currently you make a PhD, artistic research at the Gothenburg University. Um, I read your online presentation of yourself, and you said that your practice centers are on sound and listening as artistic media for exploring the conditions and effects of a public space. So I think that goes perfectly along what Seth was talking about just recently. And so I, I would invite you to the panel and, and ask you to, 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 to start the panel. Um, and maybe you have some thoughts in connection to Andreas and Seth's presentations. I mean, thinking of there's a lot of terms coming up, but like site-specific. We talked about also the word, the, the, the concept of sound art, uh, which is described in many ways in all the presentations here and all the papers and all the websites I've been reading, like sonic art, you have sound-based art, or sound-related art, I've seen those different things. How this relates to, also to, um, I mean, uh, to the visual arts in general. But, so many questions, but you can start off and give some comments, I think. So I start to see if the microphone works. Well, it of course uh, feels a bit odd to be the one that should conclude these two quite intensive presentations. So um, I can just say that um, the two presentations clearly show how uh, diverse, di diverse and um, broad the field of uh, sound art is, uh, and that there is really not, not one field of sound art at all, but, but you can see it from a really different point of perspective. On the one hand, uh, a, practi uh, a field of uh, uh, practices that from a variety of perspective uh, explore sound and listening, and on the other hand, uh, kind of um, a discourse which try to uh, um, in somehow uh, formulate issues on a more ontological or philosophical level on, on the, the uh, possibility of sound and listening. Um, and I remember when, I, when we talked a little bit in the beginning of, um, before this panel, um, a couple of weeks ago, I said that, um, well, I think one of the absolutely most problematic issues is trying to describe, or at least at, uh, to discuss, having as a discussion topic what sound art is, because it's a kind of, uh, it's, it's, um, it's absolutely a, um, w won't be possible. And I think it's much, much more important to put focus on what sound or sound art or sound listening in its broadest sense can do. Um, and that's where I think uh, opportunity comes in and a possible discussion which can be fruitful. And I think these both uh, presentation to, uh, from bigger, uh, from different perspectives shows uh, um, complications when you deal with uh, traditional heri heritage. Heritage, uh, in, uh, in Andrea's case, uh, the, the notion of sound art, uh, what, what is it, what is it not? And you were talking about site specificity and the problems that comes in that is still hovering uh, on the relation between place, site, space. There's a kind of a binary relation that is still, um, yeah, so, sort of one of the ground ground foundations of, of, of how we relate to the the whole um, topic as a field for discussion. It becomes exclusive or in inclusive. Um, yeah, that was a tiny reflection. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, um, is there something you would say in common to this, Andreas? Well, um No, I mean, I can... Uh, I think you should hold on it closer mind. to your mouth. So, okay, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I agree uh, about what you say, basically. Um, you have uh, um, very different uh, discourses and, uh, and uh, practices, that's for sure. And um, um, 
and different entrances as uh, as a writer or uh, or a scholar within uh, within this field, uh, whether you call it sound art or sound based art or a sound related art. Um, yeah. Well, uh, uh, one thing that struck me maybe when I when I heard your uh, very interesting talk set was, um, um, I mean, this uh, this kind of the site specificity that you that you describe with the um, yeah and uh, with the reference to Mi Wong Kwon uh, etc. And you also said that this is not really uh, this. This discourse is taking place within uh, within the contemporary visual art uh, context, and not so much within music, and uh, and not so much within sound art in the I don't know continental European sense. Mm, I was thinking about that, and um, and uh, is it really like that? Um, is is uh, to be a little bit bold? Is a European uh, German uh, typical prototype sound installation um, site specific only because it relates to its building and its uh, and its uh, um, and the building's uh, physical facilities, uh, etc. And um, I mean, very often you uh, you relate these installations. They are they are. Um, Presented in a special um, physical as well as historical uh, context, and uh, and very often relate further than than um, well this purely phenomenological stage, right. this uh, first stage of the Mi Wong Kwan, Mi Wong Kwan text. Um, is it like that? I, I was thinking about this uh, uh, this uh, sound installation by. Um, by uh, Bill Bill Fontana, which you have written about too, also in uh, in Anhalter Bahnhof in uh, in the mid 80s in Berlin, and uh, and uh, it's it's a very physical um, uh, sound installation, but it really relates to to uh, Berlin's position uh, within uh, within the former DDR and uh, and um, and uh, the. The newest, the late last forty years history of uh, of uh, Germany and the two German German uh, states, etc. It was just one one of many examples, I think. And um, yeah, my question is basically: uh, um, Don't you find all these all these uh, stages of uh, of site specificity also within uh, within uh, within sound art, the musical sound art, so to say? I propose that we let. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, if, obviously, I don't think so. Uh, if, if, uh, if I did understand your yeah, yeah. implicit critique right, that is. Yeah. Um, so I don't know the Bill Fontana work that you're describing, but um, the works I can think of, like the Leitner work that you showed, uh, tend to deal most often, I think, with space, with, with the way that the acoustics of the space will affect the particular sound being introduced into that space. Um, so, you know, that they'll go and work, artists will go and work with speakers in the space and test the acoustics and the, test the resonances and, um, and then install accordingly. I think that's the most common approach to site uh, with, with sound works. Uh, I can think of some works where there's some uh, interest in the institution with, uh, with the particular site and its history and uh, possibly with its funding sources, things like that. I can think of a few examples of that. Not that many, but a few. Uh, but I, I can think of very, very few that, that try to deal with all three levels of Quan's uh, site specificity, the phenomenological, the institutional, and then finally the discursive. I, there's very few sound installation type works that I can think of where the discursive is, is uh, engaged very prominently or very productively. Um, and that's what I'm always disappointed about with, with sound installations. That that art that a lot of w artists working with sound don't want to think about that very much, and I think it goes back to this um, infection of of feeling like sound is somehow um, now I'm going to mix my metaphors or, or reverse my metaphor that sound is somehow immune to worldly infections, and I've totally screwed up the infection thing. Uh, that um, that there's this tendency. Let me start. Let me go with a non-immuno word. 
um, that there's this tendency for sound people working with sound to think that that the, that sound doesn't really um, uh, have to deal with and isn't necessarily affected by socio-historic, economic, uh, gender, uh, race, ethnicity type issues. And you can just make sounds. You can put frequencies, tones into a space, and then we can listen to them as pure phenomena or as um, patterns, arrangements, and that that in and of itself is, uh, is pleasing or, you know, uh, whatever. Um, and for me, that's not enough. And I, I feel like artists working with sound who don't want to engage the world more broadly are missing out, that they're, that they're losing out on, on a lot of important um, issues and a lot of important artistic content and a lot of resonance beyond the strictly acoustic resonance. So that, you know, you, you know this, that I've been fighting for this for some time. Yeah, now. yeah, and uh, with that particular work, uh, I agree with you. Um, it's, it, it's a phenomenal, uh, it's a, um, uh, it's the first level of this, uh, of this um, right. site specificity. Yeah. Uh, with, with the Bill Fontana, uh, just short what this is about, it's a, it's a transposition of sounds from uh, Köln Hauptbahnhof to, uh, to this uh, Anhalter Bahnhof, which, which was uh, closed and uh, well destroyed um, train station in Berlin. Uh, and Bill Fontana here has also done works, you have written about this too, in Sweden, um, about this uh, transposition of sites, um, yeah. But from your, bo both of your, your, your discussions, um, to me it seems like you find that the term sound art is a bit, it, it's a bit outdated, am I right? Or that I do? Uh, yeah, in somehow, you, you, you're not really, when you're, when you're doing your presentation, you very often talk about sound and listening and sonic ex aspects or so sonic, arts and so on, but that uh, it seems like that the term sound art already has been too appropriated by a specific set of, um, yeah, practices, um, discourses, you, I mean, you're one of the main enemies to the phenomenological approach. Um, so, um, isn't that the, one of the main problems when we, when we, when it, when it's already filled a term? Because how should we be able to renew it and revitalize it? Because I think that is one of the absolutely challenges with the sound art today, to, to see what it can be, become, uh, and to see sound art um, as a process. I'm not, I'm not only talking about a specific uh, mm. composition, of course, but as a field of practices, a kind of uh, critical discourse, uh, which needs to be in a flux, so mm. to speak. And I think that the problem is that if we remain within a kind of um, constant, um, it, is, it is tremendously important to be critical, to remain critical, but we also have to move, move forward. And if we lose the tie to the, to the term, to the concepts that we already have, we have nothing, I would say. This goes also for the whole uh, discussion on site specificity and the relation to sound space, etc. Mm -hmm. But we can take that afterwards. Yeah. Just a quick comment from Seth, and then I would let the audience in yeah. as well, but yeah. I mean, I think the instructive example is, is that of visual art history, that, you know, as of 1950, there were two mediums, you know, sculpture and painting. And then after 1950, maybe really kind of picking up steam in 1965-ish, uh, suddenly we have all these other uh, avenues, you know, body art, performance, film, video, sound at some point, um, you know, all, you know, I, you know them as well as I do. I don't have to enumerate the whole list. But, but suddenly the visual arts weren't so visual anymore. Like the visual wasn't really important, but we somehow retained the name, you know, the term visual art. But we don't really worry so much about whether it's visual. And we don't really worry so much about whether it's the right word anymore. It's just now a placeholder. It's just a kind of slot into which we can feed all these practices or out of which we can extract all these practices. Um, but we don't really worry about it. And I, I think when sound art gets to that stage, sound art will be, you know, we'll all be better off. Like, to not worry about whether, it, whether it's literally sounding, to not worry about whether it fits into a certain tradition of Klangkunst or, or sound art or whether it's sounding art, you know, the, the kind of uh, enumeration of possible variants that you, that you gave us. I think when we stop worrying about which one of those is most appropriate, we'll be better off and we'll just worry about the work, the way the visual arts do now. Or more better to pose it, maybe you can pose it, the, w the way sound can affect what it really does, rather than, than a kind of form and content, um, yeah, focus. Yeah, except there I don't believe sound really affects in any spe special or privileged way. I don't, that, neither, a, neither do okay, I. Okay, okay. 
So I, I, I think we also should let the, in the, the audience, because I, I, I think there are many people here that I know they have some opinions about what's just been discussed. So there should be microphones out here somewhere. Yeah. Is there anyone that have a comment? Morten? Yes, thank you for the wonderful presentations. I'm happy to try and break their eyes here, <laughs> and hopefully a discussion will emerge. Um, I was just thinking, I think that the, the, the field of sound in art is addressing a lot of issues which are actually not about sound art as such, which I think is also what in the direction you're pointing, uh, Seth, but it's actually about the whole construction of, of, of uh, our perception of what is art. So this is a little bit a big issue, but you could, I mean, sound has been um, present in modern art, in avant-garde art since the turn of the, the 19th century in the futurist and the data uh, surrealist exp uh, expressionist uh, experiments. And um, I think there's, in a way, that you could argue that the, the, the problem or the issue of sound is actually the problem and issue of, uh, of, of adapting, in a way, uh, both academically, but maybe also artistically, aesthetically, to what is modern art or art trying to grapple with what modernity is, in a way. So just to put a bigger picture into this, and I think that ethnography and the way to work from other perspectives into what sound is really doing to art is, is really a, a perspective that talks to me a lot. And I have to say that's also how I've been operating as a curator before. So the whole question is also, from my point of view, because I've been working with it as a collective collection thing, archive thing, which is a lot of trouble <laughs> and a lot of problems and a lot of questions like these questions. There I have uh, asked myself often, how do we actually um, present this to a public? What do we do with it? So I, I agree with you, Osana, that this question, what do we do, what, what is it that sound does, but also what do we do with sound is actually as much the question here. So I, I was just wondering if um, there were some attempts to categorize uh, that, that I, I always, when I do that, I try that, I've tried it a lot. I always uh, end up with, you know, doing this with the paper in the, in the evening if I've been working through the day and just crumble it together and say, oh, wow, I, that it didn't work in the end. It's difficult to really do these categorizations. But I was wondering if you could comment on how you would actually uh, what you would like to do with sound art. It, 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 I, we have been a little bit addressing what sound art is doing, and, and you're also, I, I guess, Seth, you, you're, you're, is, you're, you're, you're moving into the, the question of what would you like to do, but you're not addressing it directly, you're implying it in a way. So it could be really interesting to know what would you do, the three of you in the panel, with sound art if you had no limits of uh, resources and, 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 uh, and framing institutionally, phenomenologically, or whatever. Um, that could be a question I would like to hear the answers to. May I first, uh, before somebody else of you two uh, <laughs> give an answer to that, uh, just comment on, uh, it seemed that you were, uh, that you were addressing me when you talked about this, uh, this um, uh, cate categorization. I'm sorry if I misunderstood. Uh, you were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, basically, it was not so much a categorization. It was basically to give a few examples of, uh, of sound-based and sound-related works and a little bit like placing them where they are within contemporary art in general to be give, give with a few uh, word, a kind of historical uh, framework. So it was not so much about uh, these are the five categories of sound art, definitely not. Well, to, just to give a very short answer as a practitioner, uh, from the pr practitioner point of view, I think s the sound capacity is the capacity to affect, um, to, to touch, uh, to put forces in motion, 
to make things happen, to make a change possible. Uh, but what that change might be, or what it is, is of course tremendously different depending on who is perceiving my works. But that's my very tremendously short answer. Is that... Um, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to reject a premise of, of your question, which is this kind of boundless, you know, no institutions, no, no budgetary limits, no nothing. Obviously, fantasy, but, but also not, not even desirable, I don't think. I think working specifically within limitations is the most interesting thing about art, any kind of art. So... What I, we were saying this, uh, was it, I have a little jet lag, so it was either last night or this morning, um, about the idea of artists adapting to institutional structures rather than institutions having to adapt to artists. You know, it's true that, that institutions don't know how to handle sound art. They don't know how to separate one work from another and not have sound bleeding from, from one piece to another. But I think artists need to take those things into account too. You know you're going to be in an institution if you're invited to make a piece for a for a group sound show, you know this is going to be an issue for the curator, so why not work within those limitations and make a work that doesn't have that problem, that either has contained sound in some way or, or refers to sound without actually making sound or takes you off-site or puts you online, something, you know, that I think artists working with sound need to think more in, in those ways uh, and less, less in this kind of sound can do what it wants, just give me the speakers in the room, you know. It's, you know, that, that's too easy in a way, and things shouldn't be that It's easy. never easy. No, it's never easy, right. But, but artists often think, you know, they think that uh, they should be facilitated, you know. Give me the speakers I need, give me the space I need, and the piece will be wonderful, I promise you. You know, and it's, I think, working within the, the, const within the, 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 the limitations of space and budget and, you know, all the other constraints that exist in the real world. I'm sure that we will hear a lot of more answers to these questions within the next session as well, because it's a little bit close to that one. Yeah. Would you maybe have some comments as well, Andreas? Or um, well, I, I'm basically just going to re reject uh, that question as well. <laughs> uh, more uh, a, a kind of a wish that I have when I visit, uh, um, um, like a Biennale or a, or a contemporary music uh, festival, um, it struck me each time that it's uh, although uh, many works are kind of similar, um, it seems that the audience and the whole context are so uh, completely different. If you go to the Venice Biennale or if you go to uh, I don't know uh, Märzmusik or Darmstadt uh, New Music Days in in Darmstadt. You could have similar works, but it just happened that uh, Tariq Atui, he's a contemporary art person, and he's now he's there, and uh, and the contemporary art world I think it's good, appreciate it, but the contemporary music uh, is a completely different culture for some reason because it doesn't really have to be to be that. There are many similarities between uh, between um, um, arts in general and uh, and. Um, um, and these institutional um, walls or boundaries, um, it would be nice to have more flow in between, in between them. Good. I, I think... I think yeah. there's one, one more. Yeah. Can you say in which way they're different, um, more specifically, until I pass the mic? Well, I said... I said they, they very often are not so uh, so different, but but okay, sure. Uh, this uh, rather phenomenological uh, sound art that uh, that we were talking about, this you don't find so much within the art context as within contemporary music uh, contexts. Um, and to agree a, a bit with you, what you were saying uh, before. Um, I think the uh, the more contextualized sound works, um, or I mean, the contemporary art world are more stressed in putting emphasis in uh, in the contextualized uh, sound works than they would in the phenomenological sound works. Although you have you have um, uh, people like uh, like uh, Florian Hecker also there. Good. But, he, but he's getting contextualized by the art theorist theoreticians. 
Uh, he's, uh, he's very, uh, um, how do you say, pure sound in itself, music in a way is getting uh, contextualized by the theoreticians. So, so one last question from Magnus. But well, it's not really a question. It's more like, yeah, comment. I agree. It's uh, <laughs> talking about this monodisciplinary uh, perspective or contextualization that, that we, I, I mean, we are in this context right now, speaking from the art perspective, I guess. But uh, I mean, from, from uh, my personal perspective as working with this uh, audiorama venue in, in Stockholm, we get all the time people from different disciplines approaching us. It's a venue for, for listening. Uh, anyway, uh, and we get people that just simply wants to work with the sound. So you get people from radio, from dance, uh, from choreography, from, from uh, composition, I mean, like uh, art music uh, or electroacoustic music or, or uh, or from the uh, s more strictly art field, you know, traditionally, and that's just, I mean, I, I would, not to speak too much about that, but uh, that's my experience. Uh, right now, uh, the boundaries of, of the disciplines needs to just, we need to take that away if we can try to get this discussion getting further on, or to, to rise above this. Uh, well, I, I thought... If I can just add, sure. just a short, short, it's actually a comment on your, and I know that we are about to, yeah. to end this, but I think it's absolutely not, I mean, there is no, no, no surprise in that uh, uh, media or, or music festival that la launches and, and, and invites sound artists to work, normally work more from a phenomenological based uh, perspective because uh, music by tradition is, has a, is much more, has been, um, uh, has an ability to to work much more uh, and explore the material properties than, for instance, uh, contemporary art uh, has been doing the last 40 years or so. So there, it's different discourses. And I don't think everything has to be the same. I think it's good with diversity. Uh, um, so, but may, that's maybe contradicts exactly what you said. I don't know. I know no, 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 I, I agree with you. Uh, sure. I would also like to, to, to have uh, Karsten have a comment. I think that, uh, no, if it works, yeah. Um, I think the problem is always that sound is a material and uh, in the visual arts world it's still not arrived this fact. Because when you think on the futurist time, it's already happened like 70 years ago or more. Uh, when you think on the into uh, Narumori or something like this and um, now I think the visual art is a little bit overloaded with its fact that people started to working with sound, artists working with sound. So I will not speak anymore about sound art, I will speak about art. And how to, because we still have to, we can discuss the whole thing all about light. It's the same kind of problematic art form, like sound art, light art, or video art. Think about 30 years ago about video art, so it was nothing. When it's becoming a flat screen, when the flat screen was invented, then uh, the start uh, the market and the video artists became a kind of famous fact. Mm -hmm. So I think the main deal is that sound is really eph ephemeral. It has a really special uh, quality, what musicians normally know, or people from the electroacoustic music. But I also want to say that uh, sound is not always coming only from speakers. This is a kind of really uh, wrong way to understand sound. And um, sound is also in this space already somewhere. I listen everywhere, some sounds. So and that it's, has something to do with the surrounding, with the atmosphere around us. And in this case, I always understand sound as a kind of situation-specific medium or material uh, where artists are working with. And uh, so this is a kind of difference which I want to point. Because, and, and you cannot really sell it, that's a problem. You can sell CDs or even um, iTunes links or whatever, but uh, a real work in the space you cannot sell. And that's also a problem in the visual arts world, you know, because everybody knows that the visual art world is really uh, depending completely on the market. Yeah, Moma just bought uh, yeah. Alvin Lucier's I Am Sitting in a Room. Yeah, but uh, uh, you so know, like, uh, Lyon have since years in their collection the piece from Alvin Lucier, The Empty Vessels, and nobody knows how to set it up, this <laughs> piece. So they were 
crazy, really crazy um, ex exhibitions with this piece, you know, like because nobody knows it. Mm -hmm. So it's only to we'll put some vessels and some microphones on opposite, mm -hmm. but this is not the piece. You have to have some experts in feedback, for example, to tune this piece, you know. When you don't do this, you have only a little piece of paper and a nice sketch from Arvin, that's all. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's the reason, because art word world to a bigger extent still regard art as objects or and and yep. i mean sound is process i think we can come back and continue that discussion later on because the next session is really taking up similar questions but it's time for something very important in sweden that's a coffee break <laughs>